That's what happens in some area with predator avoidance. They, they, uh, they use all kinds of methods to avoid being on the menu of an animal like a cougar. And we're going to dive into some of those methods with you, from, with animals at the zoo, today. This is your zoo adventures team. Steve's in front of the camera today. Brett's behind the camera. Fantastic. Brett, we have to be very careful today with the predator, like the cougar. So... I was demonstrating freeze. Let's learn about a few more predator avoidance mechanisms. Here we are at the North Carolina Zoo, spying on the kudu. We have one staring at us right now, hanging out in the grasses. Watani grassland, the 40 acre space. I don't think they can see us. I think they can see us. They can hear us. They probably can't hear us. Huh? That's why you're whispering. So kudu, the greater kudu, have some amazing adaptations to help them survive. These are all females. They're the one looking right at us. Oh, can you see this one kind of sneaking up, Brett? Just because you can see through the grasses. That's kind of a neat shot. They rely on their color to help them blend into their habitat. Notice the stripes. Digital friends, you notice the stripes? Oh, yeah. yeah. Those are there. They're really important for the kudu. They help break up the size of the animal, kind of break up that shape. So it's not this big gray blob. It's really breaking it up. And imagine if you're on the savannas or the grasslands of Africa, it helps you disappear. And here are the kudu doing exactly what they're supposed to do. One of the predator avoidance, freeze, just like that. Constantly be aware. And if Brett and I were to get much closer, they'd run away. This is a really good example of a, of a flight and fright animal. We get too close, boom, they're gone. But if we don't go too close, they know the distance that they need to run away from. So the greater kudu, predator avoidance, freeze, and then flight if predator, if danger gets too close. Hey, Brett. Yeah. Brett. Yes. That's a frog. There's two frogs. Two frogs? Yeah. Where's the other one? Oh, I see it. Another really amazing predator avoidance opportunity, digital friends. You see two different things going on here. Lower left-hand corner of that shot, you can see warning colorations. That's a Panamanian golden frog. That warning coloration tells you what if you're a predator. Digital friends. Don't eat me. <laughs> What'd you say, Brett? Don't eat me. Very good. Yeah, I'm poisonous. Don't come. Don't eat me. I'm dangerous. And I'm showing you that by the colors that you see. So Panamanian golden frog relies on those colors. Say, don't eat me. And then the other one, the Anatheca spinosa. <laughs> How about that for a scientific I name? Just learned that word today. Don't tell all the secrets, Brett. <laughs> <laughs> Anatheca Spinoza. Thank you to um, AMS Chris Shutt for letting us know that. Mm -hmm. um, look at that amazing cryptic coloration. So another frog that's using a different type of color to help them survive in their habitat. They just blend in and disappear. We're in the aviary here at the North Carolina Zoo, and we had guests come in who couldn't see them. We had to point them out. So it's really fun to be able to do that. So you kind of have the yellowish warning coloration 
on the Panamanian golden frog and the Anatheca spinosa. I think that's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Um, on Thank the you. other. And Brett, can you get, look at this color here. Are you able to get this one? Brett's doing an amazing job trying to keep the angle where it is. Are you able to see them? Oh, thank you. Can you see that beautiful color? Bright green. What a wonderful color again. Another morning color. I'm brightly colored. You don't want to eat me. So in the poison dark frog world, color, an amazing predator avoidance. Uh, Brett, Brett. Yeah. Brett. Yep. Uh, is is this a good idea? Yeah. Keeper said it was fine to be here, right? I don't know. April. Are you sure it's okay for us to be in here, right? Yeah. Everything's good. <laughs> Everything's all right. Whew, no. All right. So, predator avoidance. Uh, digital friends, what might the skunk have <laughs> for predator avoidance? smell <laughs> hopefully not right now though <laughs> nope, yeah, right that would not be a good thing so i think i have the strange idea that all of you have a pretty good idea they can definitely use those chemicals right they can raise that tail and spray that really really powerful scent to keep a predator away and the warning coloration again like we saw in the dart frogs is also now she ran away. Oh, here she comes. Around the corner. Into the, into the log. She's going to come out. That would be hilarious. She's come, oh, there it is. How about some thumbs up for that, digital friend? That was awesome. That was cool. So, yeah. So, like the dart frogs, that warning coloration also gives her a little bit of an, of an advantage. Not a whole lot of predators going to be messing with them. Now, realize, too, though, that the skunk is a predator. But there are animals that might look at this young lady as a meal. So being able to protect yourself with that smell, with that noxious chemical, and then warning predators based with the colors that you see here, that, that wonderful black and white, keeps the skunk safe from potential predators. Although I'm not real sure I would want to take, go mess no toe to toe with one of them. <laughs> Another really cool thing they'll do. Speaking of toes, move yours. She's coming for me. She's coming for me. They'll actually kind of, uh, kind of pound the ground a little bit to 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 tell. That's my shoe. That was very good that she just kind of recognized that. Um, they'll kind of stamp the ground before. This is a warning. Say, hey, look, I'm I'm dangerous. Here's another warning for you before I unleash this chemical on you. So another way that they can do to protect themselves from potential predators, potential danger in general. By the way, this is Stinker. I'm gonna ask April one question real quick. Um, just age, how old is Stinkering? I know we've been here before, but April is, or April is don't tell them your age, that's not appropriate. <laughs> not a fair question. Stinker is how old? She's gonna be seven in December. Seven, that is so cool. That is so <laughs> neat. And Stinker, although we're talking about the chemicals, she does not have the, she does not have the spray, right? She had the scent glands removed. Right before she came to the zoo. That yes. wasn't something that we had gotten into. We haven't seen her stinky side. We haven't seen her. Well, you, you talk about her personality yeah. every once in a while, but that's all right. That's an attitude. <laughs> she is one of our animal ambassadors here, Digital Friends. So um, Stinker does go out and do programs for everybody. Um, April and Christine, who's in here as well, working with Stinker to do those programs. So a little sidebar. But predator avoidance, chemicals, color, and that warning stamp on the ground, or stomp on the ground. Skunks. <laughs> well, this is kind of cool, digital friends. This is the back end of a hellbender. Hellbender is a large, large salamander, fully aquatic salamander. And although you can't tell right now based on the coloration, man, it looks like his head's poking out the other side. Let's see what happens here. Brett's doing some great job trying to get a good video for y'all. <clears throat> the Hellbender is a hider, as you might imagine. Nicknames Snot Otter. 
lasagna lizard. But yeah, that's kind of cool. They're amazing hiders. And they can wedge themselves under really flattened rocks. That's actually where they'll raise their young. They'll lay eggs and raise their young under those flattened, flattened rocks. So being able to camouflage, being able to blend in with their environment is a wonderful way to help them survive. There are a lot of animals that wouldn't mind having a hellbender for dinner or lunch or breakfast. So being able to hide from those predators using some really cool cryptic coloration, awesome camouflage is great for them. The other thing they're really good at doing, as mentioned, is they're awesome hiders. They'll get underneath those really large flat rocks. Because they get under those flat rocks, do me a favor, digital friends, when you're out and about creaking, when you're out and about looking in streams and investigating things, please don't move the rocks. That is really the home and habitat for so many animals. So although the art structures look really cool, please, please, please don't move them because animals like this hellbender rely on those rocks to be able to hide up under using that wonderful camouflage as well. And then just because we can share about it, I th Brett, can you pan out a little bit? I'm just gonna kind of point. Can you see this box? The North Carolina Zoo actually deploys, now this is a half one, and this is a little small. We actually deploy these boxes in some rivers in Western North Carolina to provide homes and shelters for the hellbender. Just as a little aside, something the North Carolina Zoo is doing to help this amazing aquatic salamander. So hellbenders, really nice that they were out and about for us a little bit today. Wonderful cryptic camouflage for predator avoidance. That flattened body and ability to get underneath those flat, flat rocks also helps get away from potential dangers. Predator avoidance of the hellbender. Um, hey, Brett. Yeah. You brought us to elk? I did. Example of an animal that does a little bit of everything. All of the, all of the flighting and fretting and freezing. <laughs> all the... <f> <laughs> exactly. I think it's a great animal to share. The wapiti or the elk. The wapiti, uh, Native American word for the elk. Um, they can. And if you see right here, I'm sure Brett's got a great shot of them. Um, they camouflage. They just look at big rocks when they're out and about. Um, so that's one thing they can do. So in their idea of freezing, they can freeze and stand still or just lay down and not move that much. If something were to spook them, now we're at the zoo. Good thing nobody's scaring them here. No predators going in there right now. Then you might see them flight. You might see them run away, which makes sense. And then, Brett, how good are you on that camera? Can you catch Tommy back there? He's the big male. Yeah, he looks like a tree. He does? He looks like a tree? Kind of. But he's not a tree. And those antlers that you see on top of his head, pure bone. We've talked about antlers and horns before. So if he feels threatened, if he feels in danger, or he's trying to protect his harem, protect the females that are under his kind of world, he's going to fight to protect himself and that harem. So the wapiti are a great example of an animal whose predator avoidance runs the gamut. You see it all in this herd. Bison, I'm sorry, wapiti, fight, flight, freeze. Chimpanzees. Today, all about predator avoidance. Well, what, why? What, what do chimpanzees have to avoid out there? Well, yeah, they're pretty strong. Well, there are actually predators on chimpanzees. Some other chimpanzees, you might get leopards, lions, taking a single animal sometimes. So the key there is to not be alone. So look at everybody traveling together. 
and the big male all by himself over he can take care of himself but the other animals kind of traveling together working together in a large troop even here at the north carolina zoo so if you stick together kind of watch each other's back you're able to really really take care of yourself so another way of predator avoidance is simply hanging out in, the, in a big group like this, in a troop. Now, chimpanzees also have a really nice advantage. They can use tools. So they have been known to throw things, to bang things together, to rattle trees and bushes and grasses. So they have a lot of things they can do, but the troop dynamic, that group dynamic, is a huge way to stay safe if you're a chimpanzee. How's your shot there, Brett? Oh, good. I see all of them all together. Yeah. So we have a group here real quick. This is a fission fusion group. Not quite what we're talking about, but this is a normal, a, no a regular group, and another group's kind of mixed in every once in a while. So that's the fusion part of it. Any chance you be able to get the, the little ones up there on top of the hill, Brett? I got the little, oh, you the did? Awesome. Bit. So another, trying to avoid those the animals who a predator might be looking for. So being able to stay in this large group, moving together, socializing together, an awesome way to stay safe. Chimpanzees staying together in large troops, predator avoidance for them. Hey. Hey, Brett, do you know what the, what the big animals are? The big ones? They look really tiny from where I am. <laughs> uh, antelope. They are an antelope, a type of antelope. This is the fringe-eared oryx. A nice herd of them here at the North Carolina Zoo on our Watani grasslands habitat. A 40-acre space for these uh, really neat animals. And like we've heard today, a lot of these animals, their first reaction to danger, their first reaction to a predator is flight, is get away. If you can outrun danger, why not do that? But look at the horns. They're almost like rapier-like swords on top of their head. So if they are threatened, if they do feel they're in danger, they can turn on a predator like a lion or maybe a leopard of Africa. They can turn and lower that head, pointing those really sharp horns out at the potential danger. So really neat, they can do both, and they do both so well. Fringe-eared oryx, kind of a sidebar, from a side, almost looks unicornish. You almost see those horns kind of mel almost mixing together there, kind of make them disappear. But, but, but we digress, as we say here at Zoo Adventures. Fringe-eared oryx, predator avoidance, yep. flight, first and foremost, but they can sure take care of themselves with those sharp, sharp horns. Ha! Defense mechanisms, predator avoidance. I'm sure you guys can't see me back here. <laughs> Brett, how am I doing? Camouflaged. Yeah, you, you blend right there. I'm gonna freeze. Can Where you did he go? Can you see me anymore? <laughs> How cool was that? Some really cool math and all can be seen on animals here at the North Carolina Zoo. So different ways to protect yourselves. You can hide, you can run away, you can fight, use color, all kinds of stuff. Oh, so this is your Zoo Adventures team checking out. Steve was in front of the camera. Brett's behind the camera. Always good to have Brett. Um, we'll see you again next week. Y'all stay safe. Bye.